Assalamu alaikum. So we're making a video demonstration for the Ghusl al procedure uh, to help with any new volunteers to the process. So firstly, thank you very much if you have volunteered uh, to help with this. Uh, the reward for this act is uh, abundant. So uh, once again, thank you very much uh, for your service. I guess a couple of questions that new volunteers might have is about the actual procedure itself. And I'm hoping that in this video demonstration, we'll be able to show you that it's a, a very simple and straightforward procedure uh, and you will have other volunteers around you to support you. Uh, the second thing is with regards to safety of the volunteers given the current COVID pandemic. And with regard to that, I just want to reassure you that we've we've put together quite a, a stringent and robust uh, protocol with the primary objective being to ensure the safety of our volunteers. So uh, I want you to be assured that you will be wearing full personal protective equipment uh, and that the protocols that we've had in place are designed to ensure that uh, the risk of transmission has been kept to an absolute minimum. Uh, the risk of transmission from a dead body is much, much lower than it would be for a living person. Um, and so we've been extremely cautious in making sure that uh, any measure that we can take to ensure the safety of our volunteers, we have taken. So uh, I hope that that will reassure you and you'll see, inshallah, uh, from the protocol and from the demonstration, uh, the extent to which we've been able to do that. So what's going to happen is the funeral director will uh, bring the body to the mosque. That's normally done from this area here. Uh, once they arrive, uh, the body will already have on, uh, on it a surgical mask um, and the funeral directors will assist in actually getting the body uh, from the car which they arrive in uh, and into the Gusel room which is on my left here. Um, so the other thing to mention is that throughout the whole process any access to the mosque must be done by this external door here. We will not be using the rest of the centre at all. Um, so this is the entrance from which we will be uh, entering. Before we enter, uh, all the volunteers will be putting on their personal protective equipment and this will be supervised by someone who's been trained with, use, with the use of PPE. So that PPE will include a um, set of goggles, an N95 face mask, um, a coverall which is essentially a long uh, overall which has got long sleeves uh, and uh, goes all the way down to your feet. Uh, and also with shoe covers as well. We'll also be giving each volunteer two sets of gloves to wear on top of that, so you'll be completely covered before we enter the of the hospital. So now, having done that, having put on our PPE, we'll go inside uh, and see the actual Gusul procedure. So now we're in the Gusul room. Uh, I guess a couple of things to bear in mind are that as well as the risk of transmission from the dead body itself, there is also the risk of transmission from other volunteers. And that's why it's important that we wear PPE from outside of the Ghusl room. Uh, and that before PPE is worn, it's important that we maintain social distancing amongst the volunteers and that there should be no handshaking or any other physical contact between the volunteers. Once PPE is worn and we are in the Ghusl room, then we can be closer than two metres apart from each other. Uh, so that we are able to perform the ghusl. As well as the risk from volunteers, looking at the dead body itself, the, the body will have a surgical mask on. Uh, as well as this, there may be cotton wool in the nostrils and the mouth to reduce the risk of any air escaping from the dead body. So now we come on to the actual washing of the dead body. Uh, the first thing that will be done is a general wash which will be done with the shower head here as well as use it using shower gel or shampoo and the purpose of this is just to remove any dirt or anything else from the surface of the body so that the bustle can be performed. Uh, so that will be done by you know, using shampoo on the head and making sure that a general wash of the body is done to remove any dirt. Once that is done uh, we will be moving on to the three bustles. For that, um, I'll show you briefly the controls that we have here. Alhamdulillah, we do have uh, very good facilities that make performing the ghusl very easy. So here you will see the switch, the, the water main switch. So this would need to be turned on. Um, and then once that is turned on, we can turn on each of these in turn. So the three ghusls that we will be performing are the ghusl of Abi Sidr, the ghusl of Abi Kafur, and then thirdly, the ghusl of Abi Khalis. This is with Sidr leaves, this is with camphor, and this is pure water. 
So that's, those are the controls, and there's also a temperature control at the bottom as well. So you'll see that for the sidr and the camphor, the water runs through these respective filters to actually ensure that we are getting Arbi Siddur and Arbi Kafur respectively. So those are the controls. Now in terms of the ghusl itself, the first ghusl will be the ghusl of Arbi Siddur. What is very important is that the niyyah is performed. So the volunteer who is leading the ghusl uh, for Arbi Siddur will recite the niyyah loudly so that everyone can share in that niyyah and that would essentially be that we are doing the ghusl al-mayyit with Arbi's Siddur for this person, we would name the, the deceased Qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala So once that niyyah is performed we will turn on the Arbi's Siddur water and that will come out of the shower head uh, as, as previously was the case So in terms of doing the ghusl we will start off by washing the head and the shoulders. This would be including you know, washing all of the hair, uh, washing behind the head, washing the ears behind the ears, washing the shoulders, and washing the area under the mask as well, uh, whilst keeping the mask in place for as much as possible. You'll notice there is a headrest here, where the, uh, the head of the deceased will, will be uh, resting. The head can be lifted to ensure that the back of the head is washed properly. Once the head and shoulders have been washed, the next part would be the right side of the body uh, and the private parts. So that will be done by just washing uh, on the right side like this. We would make sure that all of the creases and folds of the skin have been washed as well. So that might involve you know, lifting up the arm, for example, uh, using your hand to just get to the various areas of the body. Uh, under the towel will need to be washed as well uh, and this would need to be done whilst maintaining the dignity of the maillet. Um, but all of the areas will need to be washed uh, and you will be wearing your full PPE so you can use your hands to wash all of the areas of the body, ensuring you're also getting in between the toes for example. Once the front is washed, the body will be slightly rolled onto the, onto the left side just to allow the volunteers just to get to the back of the body and to make sure that there are no areas of skin that have been left out. Bear in, bear in mind that we, we only want to move the body just as much as necessary, we want to try and uh, not to move the body any more than we need to in order to reduce the risk of any, uh, uh, the risk posed to the volunteers. So, once the right side is, uh, and the private parts have been washed, Next, we will be doing the same, but for the left side as well as the private parts as well. So, again, we'll just be washing the whole of the left side as we did previously, uh, ensuring that we're getting in between the toes, the various folds of the skin, underneath the towel, and then rolling the body on to slightly onto the right side so that the back of the body can be washed there. Once that is performed, uh, that is the first ghusl complete. We will be doing exactly the same procedure for the following two ghusls which will be the ghusl of Abi Kafur and the ghusl of Abi Khalis. Because the reward of performing these ghusls is so great, we suggest that each of the three ghusls is led by a different volunteer so that we can all share in this great reward. Once those three ghusls are complete, uh, all of the volunteers will be able to assist with regards to drying the body. So we will have several towels, uh, for the volunteers to use, and the idea is to dry the body as thoroughly as we can so that when kafan is performed, the body is dry. In order to do this, we may need to dry the actual table itself to ensure the body is not going to continue to remain wet. Uh, and once again, we may need to roll the body slightly to ensure that we're drying all areas of the body. Once the body is dry, we will be placing a towel underneath the body um, in order to transfer the body to another table for kafan. Once a towel has been laid, laid underneath the body, this can be done by putting the towel in from one side, rolling the body slightly and then just pulling it through from the other side so the towel lays underneath the body. Once this is done, it will require one or two volunteers on this side, one or two volunteers on that side and we will be holding the edge of the towel itself and then on the count of three we can all lift the towel and slide it across to the next table which will be adjacent to, to this table uh, and that will be the table on which kafan 
is performed. The Kufan table will already be laid out with all of the Kufan items. So once the body is transferred onto the Kufan table, the Kufan will be performed by one of the other volunteers. Once the Kufan has been completed, the body will be placed into a transparent body bag and then that will be placed inside a coffin. The coffin will be moved just outside of Gusurum uh, by the external entrance here, uh, a few metres away from the entrance. Any family members who then wish to bid their final farewell to the maid will be allowed to do so, uh, but will be required to wear gloves and a mask. Through this process there will be a no contact policy, so they will not be allowed to touch the coffin uh, or the body bag, but they will be able to see the maid through the body bag. For the Gusel volunteers, uh, once the Gusel and Kafan has been completed, Gusel volunteers will be able to exit via the external entrance. Once they are outside, they will be required to remove their PPE. Any disposable items of PPE will go straight into a clinical waste bin just outside the entrance to the Gusel room, uh, and the goggles will be kept in a box alongside the clinical waste bin. Once all of the volunteers have done that, uh, the clinical waste bags and the box of goggles will be placed just inside the Gussel room entrance and this will be disposed of by a professional cleaning company when they come to clean and disinfect the Gussel room. Once all that has happened uh, and the family have bid, bid their final farewells, the coffin will be loaded onto the hearse uh, and the funeral directors will be taking the mayor to the cemetery where the burial will take place. So that brings us to the end of our video demonstration. If there are any other questions, then please do get in contact with myself or any other member of the burial team. Thank you.